Shark bake kick. <laughs> All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Thunderdome 2. I'm Koshade. I'm Intangible, and you have joined us for the semifinals. Arxidux versus, versus Shark Baits. And this is a uh, kind of a rematch of, uh, of an earlier Thunderdome game, uh, Thunderdome 1, where both of them fought. And uh, Sharkbait did end up losing. Uh, they were playing, uh, I believe, it's the same mages. Sharkbait playing the drama dialogue. Same dialogues. exact mages. And Arxidux playing the I, druid. I, I, <laughs> I have not said anything to Sharkbait in the past couple weeks of talking to him because I didn't want to like get him nervous or anything. <laughs> but I have been waiting for this rematch this entire time. Like d th that's one of the matches I've been waiting for, and I'm really glad it happened. And it looks like um, already with the initiative going to Arxidux first, and it looks like uh, that was... Who won that roll? Uh, looks like Sharkbait has won the initiative, and he is giving it to Arxidux. Uh, Sharkbait having 63 cards in his in his book. Well, Arxidux has 60. Um, kind of interesting spread there that Ar uh, Shark has more, even though he seems like the faster build. Yeah, you would really expect that, but you know what, Koshade, we're we're going to see a heck of a match tonight. Both of these players tend to be very aggressive in their own ways, so I'm very interested to see how quick this match is going to be, or if we're going to see some surprises from the players. And of course, there's uh, Arxidux. We've already gone through uh, planning. Both mages knowing what they're going to be doing with their opening. Arxidux not forgetting his Vine token. You know he's a seasoned druid player when he remembers the Vine token turn one. <laughs> so many players... <laughs> uh, so of course, you know, it seems like right off the bat that Shark has the advantage uh, because he has burns over the druids, creatures that all have burn um, uh, uh, flame plus two. Yeah. Um, so the mana flower comes down first, which is uh, an obvious choice because he doesn't actually want to throw down the tree immediately. Well, I guess it actually doesn't matter in this case, but I. Uh, it's showing that he's going to play that Mana Flower. He's definitely going to go for some economy here. Both mages choosing to go up to channel 10. Oh, wow. And it looks like Arkadix is not choosing to bring a tree out. Instead, doing Man. two Mana Flowers. Whoa! What did I say? Weird plays. Weird uh, plays. <laughs> and it looks you know, like... I uh, guess forget everything I said before about these players. I'm already, like, thrown off. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you know, it is also weird because Sharkbait loves the Mana Crystal Battleforge opening, but he's choosing a defensive Battleforge. Whoa, are we going to see some creatures, maybe? Are we going to see, um, I, I mean, we can see a whole lot of stuff. Maybe he's planning on casting every enchantment under the sun on himself. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, and equipment, of course. Arxidex choosing with the Mana Flower instead of the tree, so it looks like he's trying to not commit to anything yet. And I bet he was thinking, how aggressive is this Adramalite going to be? It's very possible. Actually, if you remember last match, he threw down his tree in, uh, in the defensive position, and Sharkbait ran at it with all his might and tried to burn it down. And the rolls were against him. He ended up wasting uh, two fireballs and like two flame blasts on yeah, it, it before the match was finally over. Uh, so maybe Arxidux in this case is just saying, you know what, I'm not going to cast a tree because I know this guy's just going to try to destroy it. So it looks like both players have taken their last match, and uh, and I bet they both reviewed it, and they both have been watching what the other player did in round one, and they're both thinking that this is the best decision they can make. And I wonder if both of them changing their moves has totally messed up any of their plans they've had for the next few rounds. They just immediately messed each other up. <laughs> It always creates a very fun little thing. So, um, so, I, Arxidux is at, yep, so Arxidux is at 11, but basically Sharkbait is, is basically channeling 11, but has an extra action. Um, it's really hard to tell who's in the lead right now. Yeah, I would say at this point, it's it's really up in the air. I mean, Sharkbait does have that extra action, has to be dedicated equipment, which for a Warlock of any type is not a problem at all. So, oh, yeah. um, it, 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 the question is, can he really uh, utilize his mana efficiently enough to ke uh, keep up with the actions that he's been given? Yeah, and Sharkbait, of course, looking at 16 mana, while Arxidux has 20. And, of course, uh, Sharkbait having that one on the Battleforge. And it looks like we're going to see the Gloves of Skill come out. Ooh. Very I love offensive the Gloves play. of Skill. This is one of those cards that 
it is very offensive, and it just says, hey, if you try to come at me right now, I'm going to have these ranged spells that I can re-roll. But if you don't, it's good for the long game. I love this over leather gloves, especially for a mage that uh, loves fire. Oh, absolutely. You know, for anybody who is unfamiliar with the card, just because it is, uh, it is a promo, it is basically a Kuro's favor, except for it doesn't allow you to re-roll. It only works for ranged attacks, and it doesn't allow you to re-roll the effect die, only the damage dice. But it only costs three. And it is an awesome little piece of equipment. Um, it's it's not better than a Kiro, but it's on par in, in a lot of ways. And it looks like, wow, Sharkbait getting super defensive, casting another Mana Crystal, and then revealing a blur on himself. He does not want to be yanked. Yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting that he chose that over the Cloak of Shadows, but, you know, he's probably thinking to himself that he needs to be able to throw down as much equipment as possible and the Cloak would slow him down. Grizzly Bear. And the Exodux. Casting the Grizzly Bear. This is scary. Not doing the plants that are vulnerable um, to that fire. Instead, he's just going, I'm going all out. High, high DPS creature offensive. Or maybe this is defensive. I don't actually know yet. So Arxidex throwing down the Druid's Leaf Ring now. Um, if he was planning around that, it would have been much better to cast the Druid Leaf Ring first, and then follow it up with a Mana Crystal, and then a Mana Crystal next turn. But I'm wondering if he wasn't expecting to cast the Druid Leaf Ring, because he thought that he was going to get rushed by the uh, the Warlock. Yeah, did the mana line up for Yeah, it would have lined up for him. Um, yeah, he would have a little bit left have, over, too. Yeah, he would have actually 13 mana, I think, this round, if he would have done it that way. Thirteen? No, he did No, yeah, yeah. No, 13. he would have two more. He would have actually two more because yeah. he would have done druid leaf ring, mana flower, and next turn another mana flower. He would save two mana off of that. So um, this is actually really interesting. Do you think? Uh, hmm. So what I'm kind of looking at right now is if that bear tries to advance, or if he tries to advance, um, shark pit is only one zone away from being range two, and uh, and with that blur on, that makes him able to target things better, but uh, but not the other way around. And I really like that. Um, it's kind of like a weird offensive blur idea. It's pretty cool. It is very interesting to point out. Actually, I would say that Sharkbait's very good at utilizing... Um, him and the Azurus are very good at utilizing the Cloak of Shadows uh, to actually, as an offensive ability, to attack their opponent while they can't be hit back. Yeah. Um, but in this case, uh, yeah, it's it's very very interesting. He's basically ma forcing Arxidux to tiptoe if he wants to come at him. Yeah, and you know what? I guess I guess this is actually super defensive. This whole play we're seeing here is very unlike what we've seen Sharkbait ever play. Two mana crystals, the one Battle Forge, and still staying in his corner the whole time. This is like this is like a whole new Sharkbait. <laughs> <laughs> he he, did, he evolved a little bit. Yeah. And of course, uh, Arxidux, not having his tree eye yet, instead of electing to go with the Steel Claw Grizzly, I bet we're going to start seeing a plant next turn to try and do something. Um, I'm guessing be... the tree is going to come out next. Yeah, I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised if you see a tree. Actually, I wouldn't be completely surprised to see an Ethereum Life tree instead of a Vine tree. Um, oh, interesting. I, I... Either would be a good choice for this case, but the Ethereum Life Tree could do him a lot of good. And since he knows that uh, Sharp Base is planning on playing defensively from here, or at least if he's caught on to that, it allows him to get away with any tree, uh, any tree of his choosing. Yeah, you know, Ethereum Life Tree would probably help out the most, especially if he's planning on being more offensive. Um, but regardless of the whole thing, both mages just choosing to stay back a little bit. Man, it looks like they're just planning right now. Sharp Base is done. And uh, Arxidex is just deciding some final things, and that's that. For those of us, or for those of you who may be just joining us, we are at the top of turn three right now. You know, truly both the skills of both players have improved since last Thunderdome. It's actually really impressive to see both these guys, how they're playing their game right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's why I, one reason I was so excited for this match, because if I feel like both of them hit the gym and, and trained a lot uh, <laughs> in preparation for, for the rematch. And it looks As, like, of course, the finals. Looks like the Ring of Curse is coming out. 
And that implies that he thinks that there's going to be something advancing this way, I think. He had to bring something out, of course, so maybe he didn't, but uh, I could definitely see him having at least one curse in his hand right now. I could definitely see it, too. It's uh, interesting, too, because he, he normally throws down the Ring of Curses turn one, so uh, he obviously um, has changed his strategy up a little bit, I think, for the better. Hmm. We're definitely seeing a lower game, and I'm I'm curious if we're going to see a creature come out of Shark Bait this round. Um, I did. I'm going to be honest. I did not see a grizzly bear come out of uh, Arctodex, and that was a really cool, surprising play. And it looks like we're changing to the action phases. Arctodex does spend his action. His mage is. A oh, no. Yep. Quick cast first. All right. He's going to do a buff of some sort. Oh no! Here comes the vine tree. There it is. <clears throat> That's going to put his channeling up to 12 and his life up to 34. And he's going to get an additional channeling, channeling on the tree. And of course, he only paid 8 mana for that tree because of that uh, druid leaf grain. Fun little, uh, fun little way to play economy here. By doing that, he has placed himself way ahead on the mana curve than uh, Sharkbait currently. So I'm, I'm curious to see if Sharkbait's going to try to, uh, to uh, play, you know, to, to match up to the mana economy. Or if he's just simply going to utilize what he has at his advantage right now to, to make his move. Ooh, and it looks like Flaming Hellion does come out for short bait. Seeing some creatures! That is some rare stuff out of a drum like Warlocks. And yeah, what will the I, bear do? The bear is a bit far back. Uh, I mean, it could totally see him running two spaces or just moving up and guarding. Uh, Flame Hellion, really good choice for a Drama like Warlock because it does take advantage of all of the Drama like Warlock's abilities. Man, I mean, a March for Death, and uh, the Flame Hellion is rolling six dice, and uh, and a six up burn if you just mark for Death something. That's really good. That's like a Drama like good. <laughs> That's just one buff. Absolutely. Or I mean, curses, even at it. Yeah, it's it even even at uh, a range attack, he would still be rolling. Uh, what is it, five damage, with a four up chance to burn and a nine up chance to do two burns. That's insanely good. I'm liking these hellings, and it looks like Sharkbait's gonna sit back, um, and he's just going, "All right, you're gonna come to me. Well, let's see what happens." I'm I'm curious to see what this vine tree ends up doing in the long run, because uh, the last game we saw Arxidux use a lot of walls. And um, I'm wondering if he's going to try to set this up um, slowly. Yes, unfortunately, I ended up uh, missing Shark Bait's uh, first match against um, Henry Ketchup. So I I've actually <laughs> haven't seen all of the developments of his deck since I've looked at it the first time. Oh, man. Of course, the last game, um, Shark Bait played against Henry Ketchup, and it was a game of just enchantment trading. And both of them trying to use range to their advantage. And both of them wanted to be outside of range. Um, wanted to have blur or something on. So be at range 2 while the opponent didn't. And both of them kept like swapping spells in that sort of sense. And Sharkway showed off an amazing ability. Killing an angel. Um, a guardian angel in, uh, in one turn. Just obliterating it with fire. Um, and then just evening out the playing field and using things like teleport traps and stuff to buy a little bit of time that he needs to set up properly, and then just killing Henry Ketchup with the Deathlock. It was an awesome match. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm jealous I missed it. <laughs> well, you could always watch it on the Arcane Duels YouTube channel. Plug, plug. Plug, shameless plugging. <laughs> Uh, right, it looks like both of them have planned. Sharkbait's still thinking about this battle forge. <clears throat> Not oh no, if you if you were him, what kind of piece of equipment would you throw onto that battle forge? Hmm. Well, um, the thing is, he likes to wait for the fire shaper ring until the moment that he's going to attack. But um, he doesn't have the curses out in order to think I should start using my fire attack soon. So, honestly. He's looking at 13 mana. I'm not sure if he wants to cast another creature or not. <clears throat> that might be what he's thinking about. But, um... It looks like he's going to pass on the Battle Forge. And, uh, I'm guessing what's on Arxodux is probably a Burkskin. 
it's possible that it's something like Cheetah Speed, but I, I doubt it. And I'm guessing on Sharkbait right now, uh, he has a decoy, of course, but I'm guessing the other one is uh, um, Hawkeye, I'm guessing. I can see that. I'm wondering right now if he's going to take this advantage to go aggressive, cast curses on the Steel Claw Grizzly or something like that, or if instead he's going to spend his remaining 13 mana to maybe cast another Flame Hellion mm -hmm. or uh, or Dark Pack Slayer. So the question... Ooh, and the Seedling Pond coming out. Wonderful choice there. And he's going to cast an offensive Seedling Pond. What? <laughs> that is playing with fire. Um, bringing his channeling up a little bit, uh, but of course... A it cost three, so uh, we'll see it in three or four turns. I am not a fan of this play, but I get why you're doing it, Arxidux. Um, you're trying to use it as a decoy of some sort, I'm sure, which is kind of what you did last game. But uh, I'm interested to see what you're planning and casting from this guy. Yeah, for those of uh, those of you who missed it, uh, Arxidux last game played the Seedling Pod, and it, gen it ended up generating like eight mana, and I don't think he ended up ever using no, it. I don't think so either. Um, I'm sure he had Krail Thor or something planned for that. And, of course, it looks like Arxidex is going to be playing the Elemental Cloak, uh, giving himself one armor, of course, Flame minus two, which is probably the big thing when it comes to versing a Dramalic Warlock. And Sharkbait here... is going to try to enchant Arxidex. We're going to see if that's a nullify on Arxidex right now. Asking the question, nullify? Nop. Love that. The, nop. the good old nop. <laughs> <laughs> Nope. And of course, these are two. I'm guessing one of them is marked for death, and I'm guessing the other one is enfeeble. I mean, it could be the ghoul rot poison blood combo, but uh, that's not the Adrenaline style. <laughs> not quite, at least not yet. Enfeeble would be a good choice, um, especially because he's down to just his one action right now. Ooh, it looks like it is uh, Arxivex's turn. Let's see what he does. If this is an enchant on the bear, Sharkbait is going to be, like, so upset, I think. Oh, and he's going to move down. Is he going to be in a feeble? In feeble! <laughs> and that will be his action. And this now lets Sharkbait put Flaming Heli in a position where he can uh, land some range attacks or something against the seedling butt. With the Ring of Curses, the Enfeeble has been discounted, and that puts both players at 6 mana, which is a really good play on Sharkbait's end, because now they're still going to be just about even on mana, uh, with mm -hmm. Arxix only having one more, and uh, he still lost his action. Good, wonderful play by Sharkbait. That is a great little thing. Flaming Hellion walking down and guarding. <clears throat> Man, that Flaming Hellion art is so cool. Wondering what he's going to do with this grizzly, because if he moves it in one step closer, he, he makes that bear completely vulnerable to anything that Sharkbait and the Flame Hellion can do. It could get nuked, it could get cursed. I mean, if Sharkbait has another Enfeeble, that's a great way of dealing with this guy right now. Um, you're, you're Rust, would right. actually be, Rust would actually be a pretty good response on the Steel Claw Grizzly right now. I would also love to see... Um, Maybe the Adramlik, the actual Warlock herself, get in the action and then guessing a Deathlink. That would be another good way to respond to it. A creature with this much health, Deathlink is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, because then you can just ignore it and slowly kill it over time and just, like, focus on other targets. That's the thing about the Warlock, is it has actually some of the best methods of healing in the game. Um, like, if you, if you really focus... Ooh... Steel claw He's going to run two spaces forward. <laughs> this guy. So that does leave the Seedling Pod open, which I think the Seedling Pod is ultimately supposed to be a waste your time on this kind of thing. I can see it. Um, by placing this, uh, running the Steel Claw Grizzly two spaces forward, he is now three zones away from the Druid, so Arxodex is not going to be able to cast anything on a Steel Claw Grizzly unless he spends his full action to move and that then cast so something. Brutal. And uh, so luckily, luckily Druid has a little thing called um, Spreading Vines ability. So he could consider just only sitting there and just using the vines for the best thing. Of course, he doesn't have any vines in these two locations. So, ooh, that's going to be a little tricky. This Flame Hellion. Flame Hellion, pretty good target for a Burst of Thorns. Not a very often used card, but it could be pretty useful. Yeah, absolutely. And of course... Um, 
if you do get that bleed chance off, that is pretty dang good. Although I don't think Burst of Thorns is a thorn spell, so I think he does have to waste that move action in order to use it. He does, absolutely. But that could uh, be no doubt it is good. absolutely detrimental. Okay. Man, I mean, right now, is... <laughs> right now, if I were if I were shark bait, the first thing on my mind would be, how do I prevent this uh, grizzly bear from killing my flame hellion? Yeah, and I think he's thinking, how can I? Like I, he might be debating in his head, do I kill the grizzly or do I just kill the mage? Um, but either way, I'm sure he's thinking, I got to kill it with fire. Kill it with fire. <laughs> This is actually a really big phase for Shark. Um, if he can deal with this uh, Grizzly Bear effectively, he could just win the game. And I'm guessing uh, Arxodex is thinking, because he's only pl playing one card right now, he's probably thinking, do I need to spell this in Feeble or not? Because uh, a lot of Dark Mages don't run more than one in Feeble. Yeah, it is a pretty costly card, even for a Dark Mage to run. I mean, after all, throwing in an extra enfeeble could mean that's one less dissolve or yeah, dispel absolutely. at your disposal. And plus, a lot of people, I don't know, I feel like a lot of people just don't um, don't get rid of enfeeble for some reason. Like, they just don't dispel it, you know? But regardless... It would be in his benefit, definitely, to get rid of the Enfeeble right now, because right now that druid really can't take full advantage of his actions. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, costing him six to get rid of that is, uh, it's pretty taxing, but it's so worth not having that. I guess he could cast Cheetah Speed on himself. So he wouldn't, yeah. even, he wouldn't even have to worry about a uh, another Enfeeble. Yeah, that would actually save him on economy there, and it is a nature spell, so I, I, Cheetah Speed is totally viable here. Yeah. Sort of like a weird way to dispel it. Players are just about ready. Looks like we just have to see Shark Bait throw down something on a Battle Forge. He didn't use it last turn, so it does have two mana. Um, I would be surprised if he didn't throw something on it, because he could be actually planning on taking that Grizzly straight into the Battle Forge. Ooh, that would be interesting, actually. I don't, I don't agree with that play, but at the same time, I don't disagree with that because this Battle Forge. I mean, it's got two pieces of equipment out. I typically like to think that when you get um, four or more pieces of equipment, it's definitely paid for itself. But it's probably closer to like three. Really depends on on what you cast ultimately, yeah. and as long as you're not hindering your own actions. Shark or Shark Bait's been taking. Uh, very, very good use of his actions so far. So is Arxodex, except for the, the getting enfeebled. Otherwise, they've both been playing very well to, with their own actions. Yeah, and um, what I really like... I guess I guess when you look at it, a, an action is typically worth about two mana. So that enfeeble is already paid for... I mean, minus the Ring of Curses, it's already paid for a third of, uh, of its cost already. You know, it's actually really funny. Uh, I think I came up with an interesting calculation to determine how much mana an action is worth. If you look at it, oh, Wand of Healing for uh, Shark Bait. Oh, wand of Healing. That's the, pretty early. I'm surprised to see that. All right. Um, so if a if two pieces of leather equipment they each cost two and they give you a total of two armor, Rhino Hide or yeah, Rhino Hide costs five mana and gives you two armor. So it costs one more mana than two pieces of leather equipment. And so you could say <laughs> that a quick cast is actually worth one mana because you're saving a quick cast by just casting Rhino Hide. That's not a bad way of looking at it. Of course, mm -hmm. with the new Academy stuff coming out, um, they make Disperse and Crumble cost two less. Or you, like you get refunded two mana for a, a full action versus a quick action. So maybe a quick action is worth one mana, but a full action is technically worth two Three. if you trade it. Uh, it well, if it's yeah, it depends because like if you s consider that it, a full action is worth two more mana than a quick action, yeah, 
Uh, yeah, right. So in that in that regard, it's actually one and three mana. It's but kind of, kind of again, I'm sure if Aaron Brosman heard me say this, he would completely disagree. <laughs> and Math would tell disagree me with you. <laughs> he, would, he would tell me why I'm wrong. Oh, and... but there is a guard. You can't attack the Dromlek. Sorry, buddy. Um, so Russ getting revealed on the Steel Claw, and uh, that's gonna make some interesting things. So is he thinking the the is this hmm, is this a ploy, or is this a um, or is this a I want to keep my guy alive, so I know this bear is gonna hurt something, and I just want to keep healing. Him. Yeah, it is very interesting. I mean, that's pretty dangerous, though. Flame Hellion can die to a full action from Steel Claw without much effort. I mean, piercing one, seven dice versus... Uh... Oh, and it looks like he's going to roll seven damage. Seven damage and seven dice uh, with the piercing one and two armor, so pretty lucky there. And, of course, he is going to get the attack back. He is cursed, so he's going to get five dice and a six-up chance to burn. And, of course, then the Hellion gets another attack. On top of that, but he's going against three armor. So, all right, five dice versus three armor. He is going to get two damage through, and it isn't going to do the burn, unfortunately. Ooh, I'm sure Shrek's not happy about that. Not the best roll. Ultimately, though, by guarding with the flame heli, and you're expecting it to to be just about dead, which is where it's at. So we know it's not going to survive another hit from just about most things. So the question is, does Arxodux have a Rise the Beast planned? Oh wow, that's much better roll this time, rolling six normal damage. Um, of course getting only three damage versus the two last time because it's not critical, but he does get the actual burn through. Um, and that could be very important. That burn could win him the game. <laughs> I'm sorry, he doesn't have three armor. He has uh, two armor. My bad. Or one armor, because the rest. My bad. Very good roll. I uh, would not be surprised to see a fireball come down on that grizzly right now. Man, if he could figure out a way to kill this guy right now. I'm really curious to see what Arxodix has. It is, of course, Arx's turn. So is that Rouse the Beast about to happen? Or is Arxodix going to... Gonna limp his way up to his zone so he can get in range to help out his uh, his bear companion. It is a curious decision because right now, I mean, he can rouse the beast on the uh, thorn lasher from where he's at, which is good. Two zones away, rouse the beast, very effective card, and that will allow him to uh, try to finish off the flame hellion or pull the adrama like one space closer, which mm -hmm. wouldn't do him a lot of good, honestly. Arx is like taking his time on this. He really wants to figure out what he's going to do in this action. And I don't blame him, because this this could be a game-altering action right now. Five dice. Or five, um... Five damage on a five... Uh, six, bleh, five damage on a five dice attack against a grizzly bear. That is pretty nice. Yeah, not ever. Not often you hear that. Looks like Arxelix is going to use his quick cast... Are we going to see a Dispel happen? Are we going to see a Rouse the Beast? And there is the Dispel, the dispel going down, getting rid of this Enfeeble. Sharkbait uh, netted a nice little man off of that because he only paid five, but of course it's six to Dispel. And let's see what Arxodex does as his main action. Is he going to help the bear, or is he going to try to kill off one of the creatures? Or hurt the mage or kill him? You know, if he does spend his full action to move and rouse the beast on the Thorn Lasher, uh, if uh, if um, Sharkbait's Warlock did actually plan uh, any of fire attack spell, it might actually... Whoa. Oh, Sunfire Amulet. Well, never mind. Whoa! You have a Sunfire Amulet, Arxodox! That is awesome! <laughs> what does the druid need more of? Life. And a second <laughs> Flame Inhalion going down. Oh, man! <laughs> That is some both of these players, stuff. And both does, of these players have been awesome about using all of their mana. No kidding. And of course, it will be um, Sharkbait's initiative next round. So unless Arxodux plans a an attack spell that kills the Flaming Hellion, 
that Flaming Hellion will get another action. I don't know, maybe he'll use the one of healing. I doubt it, but you never know. Yeah, it probably wouldn't be a very good strategy. It would bring it out of getting killed, out of range of getting killed by the Thorn Lasher, most likely. Um, but uh, uh, two burns, by the way, uh, two damage from the burn on a Silklaw Grizzly. Very nice, very nice. This Grizzly will probably die, and um, this round, I'm guessing. But what I'm thinking, actually, maybe not, because Arxidux, I'm thinking, is going to cast a Blood Spine Wall. And we're going to see that come down right now, right here. And this Thorn Lasher is going to just. Start whipping things through that thorn, uh, that bloodspine wall. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fabulous. Oh yeah, it would obliterate that flame hellion right now with the piercing. And the question is, does he do the flame hellion or does he try to pull the mage? Hmm. Probably the hellion is the better choice. You know what we're used to seeing is Arxodux just focus on the mage, but in the situation he's at right now, I would probably finish off the flame hellion, taking that action off the yeah, field as fast as it's, possible. It's worth it. Of course, um, Shark's going to get his chance to use the Flaming Alien first. Hmm. I don't know how Shark feels about Jinx, but right now this is the perfect opportunity for a Jinx. That's a good point. Because it, it would prevent the Druid from being able to just gank the uh, Flame Alien before it got in action. It's basically three mana for a Hell Trident attack, which is definitely worth it. That is a good way of looking at it, yeah. Uh, which, I'm, and of course, with the bear being uh, rusted, it's going to do five dice. So three mana for five dice and a six-up burn. That seems pretty good. Yeah, with enough luck, the burns might just be able to finish him off. Um, did the Hellion heal from Demonic Reward? Oh, no, he didn't have a burn yet. Uh, yeah, he didn't have yeah. a burn on him at the time. That ability is probably one of the weakest abilities that a mage has in the game. It's so but the Yeah, but you know, the Adramalic Warlock has so many other cool abilities at her disposal that it's yeah. really just kind of a nice little benefit. It's it's fun. You know, um I it kind of favors um high armored demons that have fire damage and stuff. Uh, or I guess high armored demons. So I guess I guess if you're looking at a demon that has three armor and like like a grizzly bear demon kind of idea, it probably actually is nice. But uh, flaming hellions, not so much. Yeah, not as I mean, at least not against a grizzly bear. If there was less things on the or less damage on the field, then they would be benefiting a lot more from that uh from that damage. Another good creature that would benefit from the uh, demonic gift is a uh, dark pack slayer. Dark pack slayer, yeah, having high armor. Uh, high health and the ability to like always do damage is always really nice. Yeah, I've been fa I, you know I, I used to like that creature way back in the day, and then I stopped uh, playing Warlock so much. But now that I'm back to the Warlock, I love Dark Pack Slayer because there's so much good. armor in the game. Oh yeah, so much armor. Yeah, he just survives everything, and the fact that he does piercing is so nice. And you look at something like the Blood Demon, and like he has all that bloodthirsty and stuff. It's like. In, in in the current meta, you're seeing so many bursty mages where they just burst down things. The Dark Pack Slayer makes it through, whereas the Blood Demon just kind of dies. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, Blood Demon is nice in his own right. Being able to, the, the flying is actually probably my favorite trait from the Blood Demon, mm -hmm. because flyers can be a huge problem for a lot of decks. Mm -hmm. All right, it looks like um, both of them are done with their planning phases. We're going to go right into deployment. Let's see, uh, Sharkbait has planned. Ah, armor. He is thick in walls. <laughs> and let's see what comes out of the uh, out of the book of Arxodux. Is he going to plant something out of this tree? Nice. Is he thinking about it? He only has 12 mana, so it's not a lot to work with. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Bloodspine Wall pop out of the Vine Marker right now. Uh, he's going to pay the mana, get the Vine here. What Are we, are we going to see some sort of Tangle Vine? Or Vine Snapper? Or, or Bloodspine Wall? Bloodspine Wall will be the probably one of the most obvious choices, and it's not bad. Alright, he's going to use a Vine. And another Seedling Pod! <laughs> What are you thinking, Arxodux? He's planning something. Dude, you have such a long game. This is awesome. The Sunfire Amulets, the Seedling Pods, these are all very long game strategies. And um, 
And we could still see a wall come out of Arxodux. It's very possible. So this uh, Thorn Lasher might have something to, to tickle through thorns. <laughs> yeah, it's a very unusual way of playing for Arxodux. I'm wondering how he feels right now. If he's like, man, I, I just I feel so weird right now. Oh, like I'm in somebody be... else's body. <laughs> is this going to be a burst of thorns? No, it looks like it's going to be a text. Well, if he's originating from the mage. Pearl, Pearl Rock, maybe? No, it's range 2. No, it's going to be burst of thorns. Because he just cancelled it. So he's going to have to target manually. Or he's just going to move both his cards up. <laughs> oh. Is it an incantation? Because if it's an incantation, you have to manually do it. Oh. Range. Sorry, but sorry. Sorry, Xelix, it is a range one spell, Geyser, so um, it's not going to automate. Tragedy. Yeah, that's why oh, surging, man. That's why Surging Wave is uh, kind of better than Geyser in a lot of ways. Surging Wave, my buddy. Geyser is really nice because the five up days and stuff, but like, it just. And, and you get the. It, you use it for healing more than anything, but Surging Wave is just like awesome. So many good things. The fact that attack spells are the most versatile spells in a game is very interesting. Do I miss the action in the mana? Yeah, oh, if, yeah. if Shark just says flip it and keep it, I, I'm fine with that. Cool. As I said, I you know when it comes to tournaments, I usually like the players to say, hey, it's okay, you messed that up, whatever, let's just say you didn't do it, you know? <laughs> but of course, this now gives Sharkbait the chance to use this action. <clears throat> Absolutely. Which I'm sure he was thinking that, oh god, this Flaming Hill is probably just going to die. But now he gets it, so rock on. I mean, man, if he somehow gets to that Grizzly with the Flame Hellion, I will be, like, just floored. Alright, here we go. Five dice against a one-armored creature. He only needs to deal six damage to kill it. And he's going to roll... Two damage, two burn. Two damage, two burn. That isn't bad. Two burn is really nice. But of course, that grizzly is going to get a chance to... Uh, he's going to heal himself one. And uh, that grizzly is going to get a chance to do another full-powered swing. Or will it? We're going to see a flame blast. Uh, there's the Hawkeye. And Hurl Rock. Okay, so we're going to see six dice uh, against um, one armor, and he has four life left. This should kill him, and it will kill the bear! Oh! That is devastating. Oh, no. <laughs> that is brutal to deal with. And, uh, of course, the bear does die. Uh, getting rid of that rust, too. Uh, it was a nice investment, and, you know, Shark did invest a lot to kill it. Um, it was probably worth it, though, for more than Shark versus Arxodux, but in the end. Uh, but still, nice way of dealing with it. Man, we have seen Shark deal with Guardian Angels in this tournament and Bears now. Um, and a nice display without without really dying and or and without really getting the super lucky rolls that, uh, that a lot of people think you need. Yeah, no, he's just been kind of biding his time. This shows a little bit of maturity on his end. Not necessarily a better play strategy, but simply he... He has started valuing creatures higher and has taken a little bit of uh, typical aggression um, out from under his belt. Mm -hmm. And of course it is Arxodux's turn. Now that bear is gone, uh, it's three of creatures versus two. Let's see if he can kill this Hellion. I'm sure Arxodux is thinking a lot right here. He could place the Blood Spine Wall. Um, and then the Thorn Lasher would probably kill this Hellion. But the the wall will probably die to the other Hellion. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the question is, does he even bother wasting an action right this moment to try to kill the Flame Hellion that's already acted? Uh, because most likely, uh, Sharkbait doesn't have a way to heal that Hellion. I mean, he has the Wand of Healing, but... Oh, yeah, well, that is fair, actually. That could be pretty helpful. 
I wonder if Arxidex prepared to dissolve. I mean, that Wand of Healing costs him three spellbook points, so... Wand of Healing just shows you how valuable it is when a, when a Dark Mage would run it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and Arxidex is just really thinking here. Yeah, I don't blame him. Uh, so I have to say, in this regard, Sharkbait actually had a very good uh, plan. Uh, he threw down that, that Wand of Healing, knowing very well the next turn the Grizzly was going to be able to do a massive amount of damage mm -hmm. to one of his creatures. Mm -hmm. So he cast that Healing Wand a turn in advance. You know, both players are actually showing... Ver oh, wow. And both players are actually showing a very mature way of dealing with it here, because Arxodux, playing the Sunfire Amulet, playing these two Seething Pods, he's really thinking a lot about um, how he's going to set himself up for the late game. That seems like all he's worried about right now is winning the late game. And, of course... So, uh, the Druid ran two spaces. And is going to Geyser. But ran two spaces. Does he have a Cheetah Speed to reveal? Nope. He, he flipped his quick cast, and then he casted the... Uh, oh, no! Arxodox only rolling four damage, two of that getting absorbed by the Battleforge's armor, not even dealing a big dent. I mean, it deals a third. But that is not enough to think that that run to and Geyser was worth it. Man, that can be devastating. So right now, that's standing in between that Flame Hellion dying or not, this turn is that uh, that Thorn Lasher. So if that Thorn Lasher can be dealt with this turn, which is possible with the other Flame Hellion, that Thorn Lasher uh, would not be able to kill the Flame Hellion, obviously. And uh, Sharkbait could use the Wand of Healing and heal the Flaming Hellion, and then send the other Flaming Hellion to attack this Thorn Lasher. Um, but... As it stands right now, I mean, this Thorn Lasher can't even kill him really in one hit. I mean, he could, but you know, you have to get kind of lucky. That's pretty unlucky. Or he unlikely. is going to do the Wand of Healing, is going to pay two mana, and deal that two healing. Let's see if it pays off. Oh, going exactly yeah. down to zero. Beautiful. Oh, and he gets four healing! Oh, <laughs> no! You know, oh, I will say, man. that's been probably the first roll this match that was really unlikely. All the rest of them were yeah. pretty on par, and uh, Sharkbait did have one under par, so I'd say this is all starting to really balance out. Oh yeah, absolutely. Man, Flamey Hellion now is at two damage, he is way out of dead zone, and uh, you know, if this other Flamey Hellion burned this Thorn Lasher, and then this other Flamey Hellion, you know, hit it again, that's another healing. Or, you know, like, that, that whole thing adds up. Uh, at the same time, he might just want to consider killing these sleeping pods. <laughs> Four damage on a healing wand. Did you tell him that it's kind of strange for a warlock to run minor heal? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I, I actually think the wand of healing is way better than um, healing wand. Uh, unless you're going to use the ring of healing. Ring of healing, yeah, I could see. I, uh, definitely that. I mean, ring of healing um, is basically reverse fire shaper ring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, Arxodex running two spaces and casting the geyser he does actually have he will be at 17 mana next turn that gives him enough to do another grizzly or it gives him enough da uh, damage output to deal with the battle forge you know I would actually like to see him kill the ceiling pod uh, shark bait right now because if a Krail Thor comes out of there that's going to be a little bit of trouble oh absolutely Course, With well-placed um, spells, Krauthor killing one of the Hellions would be devastating. Looks like some people in the chat are saying hi. Hey, everyone, how's it going? Um, you know, I mean, the thing is, Arxodex is going to have 17 mana, so that would be 19 with this pod, or, I'm sorry, 20 with the pod, and then another one off the... Uh, so you can have 20. I mean, hmm. I wonder if he uh, has a good Togara. amount of mana. <laughs> I wonder if he has Togara. There's something like that. <laughs> we were well. If you remember, we were waiting for it last match because <laughs> yeah, right? he had so much mana. So I don't. I mean, even if he does have it, I don't know if he'd want to cast it against a a, a drama like warlock. Yeah, I mean, two flaming hellions. Oh wow! And it looks like he's not going to get the smash. The snatch. Uh, that little tickling only dealing one critical damage. Um. Man, so even if he didn't heal, he wouldn't have killed them. That's so unfortunate. Yeah, you know, I would still feel a little bit better about myself as Arxodex in that case, because if I 
came one away from killing it and mm -hmm. it didn't uh, heal itself, then I would just be really sad. Yeah. And there's a Flaming Hellion doing... Uh, oh, nine going damage. In, going into rolling six dice and getting nine damage and one burn! That Flaming Hellion! This thing could die next... Or no, it can't die during upkeep because it does regenerate, but... Uh, holy crap! <laughs> yeah. Man, this Flaming Hellion almost paying for itself with the one-hit kill. <laughs> Seeing a, a really strong control match of this game. The burn's going to deal one damage, and, and then he's going to subsequently heal two. And it is, of course, uh, Arxodex's initiative now. So the Thornlasher could still kill this Flaming Hillion. And, um, and I'm sure he'll regenerate on his own. Um, I'm curious to see if the Ceiling Pot is going to do anything. Or if it's just sitting there just to, like, gain mana... You know, maybe Arxodex's plan is to just go the whole tournament without casting Targara, <laughs> making us think he doesn't have it, and then all of a sudden just revealing it like last match. The grand like, finals <laughs> match. <laughs> I had it the whole time. It'd be really funny if he had no plan for these seedling pods. He just had them because he likes them or something. <laughs> People will totally attack them. <laughs> And so far, everybody's just been ignoring the seedling pod. Yeah, it's very interesting. And most people say seedling pod, just just stamp it out with your foot. But no, not in this case. <laughs> there is no actions, and I really like how Arxodex actually is applying the pressure to to make it so you don't want to kill these seedling pods. That's a really smart move. Yes, it is. If uh, if if Arxodex can get another creature down right now, he could definitely still swing this game around um, because. The, the Flame Hellions, is, they can be tough to beat, but or, or they can be pretty powerful, but they're not in, you know, so durable that he can't make a turnaround on a, on the two creature armor. active there. Yeah, 2 armor 9 health is uh, not that much, especially when you're dealing with a level 3 creature. And it looks like uh, Shark Pit is going to get more use out of this Battleforge here, but Arxodex has one card out. And, you know, you were saying Grizzly Bear earlier. That could just be what he's planning right now, and he's considering other things. Um, but I, I just, I don't know if he had another Grizzly Bear, if that would be the wisest move, but um, it's certainly something he could do. And I think we're starting to see Sharkbait have a little bit of a hold here, and I think Arxodex does have a chance to make a comeback. Oh, yeah, this... I would say right now there is a clear advantage on Sharkbait's end, but unless he presses that advantage, he could lose it within one turn. That's all it would take. You know, now that I think about it, I don't think this is actually a legal move, having two Sleeping Pods in the same zone. Huh. Oh, you are you know what? You're absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you should point that out. We failed... <laughs> Shark bait. <laughs> Jerk. Alright, everybody, I will return. But for now, I leave you. For three minutes. Alright. Yeah, so technically you're not allowed to have um, two conjurations in the same zone. So you're not allowed to have, like, one wizard's not allowed to have a, uh, a wizard's tower, and then another wizard comes in and puts another wizard's tower in the same zone, because you're not allowed to do that, because technically one zone is only allowed to have one card of the same name attached to it. Um, so I hope, I hope I didn't, like, distract them by saying that, but... Just for future reference, you're not actually allowed to have two ceiling pods in the same zone. Um, uh, 
yeah, I don't think I don't think it's, it'd be right for me to say take it away, but uh, you know, it's all good. Um, because I'm not sure if it's actually going to change this game because that rule is a blanket rule, and the seedling pause is probably one of those minor cases where you see it. Um. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it's continuing on now that we have completely lost focus here on, on what they're probably planning right now. Um, so Arxodux playing the Sunfire Amulet makes a very interesting strategy because Sharkbait, if he wants to waste a Dissolve getting rid of the Sunfire Amulet, I think Arxodux says that's fine because now I can get some sort of advantage to keep, um, keep going with the offensive. And I think if Sharkbait chooses to Dissolve this, that gives Arxodux a great chance to come back in this game stronger. Because right now, Sharkbait has a, a minor advantage, but I wouldn't say that he is for sure going to win right now. Um, so, this Thornlasher here, having eight, 8 life and 1 burn, I think it's probably going to die by this Flaming Hellion, and Arxodux might be thinking, I need to kill this Hellion before it does anything else. But... That's dealing six more damage on two armor creature. That's not easy to do in just your normal quick cast. Um, I have Arxodex, returned. Hey, um, so Arxodex trying to go after this battle forge. I'm not sure is going to be a good idea or not. It's possible that Arxodex could just kill this battle forge and then run away and then try to make a more defensive uh, game in his in his uh, his corner. Um, but regardless, I think. I think what Arxodex needs to do is figure out how he's going to deal with this Hellion that's suddenly back in power. And the thing about Wand of Healing and why it's so good right now is every time that Arxodex fails to kill this Flaming Hellion, such as this Thornlasher trying to hit him or something like that, this Wand of Healing gets a little bit more use, and it's too mana to basically keep this four dice melee creature that can do burns alive. And... Um, I'm thinking Arxodux is either going to try to... Oh, man. I, I, I wouldn't want to see him hurl Boulder on this Flaming Hellion. Because, you know, statistically, I don't think that would actually kill him. Um, I would love to see a Bloodspine Wall and then just the first action. Oh, man, see, I, I don't actually know. There's, there's it's, a not... it's a tough situation yeah, for him it, to be in right now. It's not uh, easy for him. I will say this right now, that uh, with that Fire Shaper ring down... I wouldn't be surprised to see the Adramalic Warlock just run in and punch the uh, Thorn Lasher and save the actions of the Flame Hellions for, you know, either the Mage or whatever creature that the Mage, uh, that Arxodex summons. Just sort of has Sharkbait start accumulating more mana so he can do some sort of bigger offensive uh, round next round when he has initiative. Oh, absolutely. He needs it. He has a, a bit of an advantage right now and he needs to press it by both destroying the Thorn Lasher and uh, maybe even casting an, uh, another creature next round. That way he has uh, he continues just having so many actions on the board that it's hard for Ar Arxodux to even get a creature down on the board and keep it without it just being swarmed and killed mm -hmm. before it gets to act. That, that is the tough part of, of a situation like this, is when you're down creatures and you keep summoning them, they just get focused down. So we see a geyser come out from Arxodux. He's planning on getting rid of that Battle Forge right now. And it looks like he He's is gonna deal three damage. not going to succeed, getting five damage total, uh, but he needs six to kill it. Oh, man. I'm sorry, Exodus. That's two geysers used, eight mana total, and an eight mana battle forge. That's already gotten a, uh, plenty of mana out and actions out. Um, that is very unfortunate, I think, for Arxodux. You know, without it, without it having depleted armor from, like, an acid bolt, that's actually not a terrible roll against Battle Forge, because he did roll three critical. Yeah, so, I, I would say that still works out for him. Because statistically, you'll do, like, two damage, maybe three damage around. And, oh, wow. Sharkbait is going to dissolve the Sunfire Amulet. Oh, no, the Elemental Cloak. He just says, screw you to gaining life. I want to deal more fire damage. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that, that pretty much telegraphs his move for at least the turn, unless he's actually performing a uh, some type of feint here where he's making Arxodux think that he's going to go aggressive against the mage and then uh, turns it around and does something else. Okay, and so that means both of them have used their quick casts. And let's see what Arxodux has planned for his first action. Arxodux not even thinking, just like, or not even passing to the next action, just going, I'm thinking so much about this. <laughs>
very situation to be in. Without his quick cast now, Arxidex using his quick cast too early like that because Battleforge wasn't going to do anything else this round. Mm. He probably should have saved that quick cast. Now the Thornlasher is not going to be able to like he's not going to be able to pull off a blood spine wall Thornlasher combo. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Arxidex is going to use his Thornlasher to attack this Flaming Hellion. Um, so he's probably going to deal one damage in a snatch unless he gets lucky with uh, with some crits. Considering his action here, Ooh, this is a this is a risky move. All right, he is going to go through with the attack. All right, let's see how it rolls. Does get the snatch off, doing one damage to him. It's going to snatch him over this zone, and uh, this is his chance now to just to kill this Thornlasher and gain that health back. Let's see if that's what he does. By snatching him, he do, he it, it, it is more likely that shark bait. If he does decide to attack uh, Arxodux with the creature, um, that he would use a range attack instead of a melee. But the range attack deals less damage, so maybe that was his incentive there. And you also don't get. Uh... And that is going to do it for that Thorn Lasher. He is dead. Um, this flaming healing is going to go down to three damage total, and that puts. Archduck's in it. In a sticky situation. So the question is, does he go after these ceiling pods with these Hellions? Or does he just try to kill the mage right now? Well, judging from his plays, I would imagine he's going to go after the mage, but the mage does have a move action left. Um, it's very possible for Archduck just to move over and punch the battle forge there. I'm like from his Hellions, like with walls or something next round. That would kind of give him some sort of way of like getting a, a, a hold or a position. And, it looks and that would bring him out of range of the Flame Hellions. Well, that actually isn't a bad move at all. Because um, that would really... And if he could separate the uh, the Adramalic from his Hellions, like with walls or something next round, that would kind of give him some sort of way of like getting a, a, a hold or a position. And it looks like Arxodex is going to activate his creature, not passing. Is going to move up. And he is going to put uh, Battle Forge. He'll, he'll probably kill it. All he needs is one crit. I mean, four armor, so, you know, any sort of damage. Unless he rolls all max, I guess. He really wants to kill this Battle Forge. And that is going to do it. Battle Forge is down! Goodbye, Battleforge, but it did get him five pieces of equipment. Yeah, so you know. So now, hmm. now Sharkbait is down a spawn point while uh, Arxodux does have his, and his is very safe right now. But right now, maybe... Uh, <laughs> It'd be kind of funny <laughs> if this Flaming Hellion just started sprinting over the tree. <laughs> <laughs> it's open! I'm gonna <laughs> go after it! <laughs> Even through the rain... Yeah, no kidding. That battle, the guy at the battle forge is like, I don't care about rain. I'm just gonna keep keep on working. I'm the guy at the battle forge. And with how well that first geyser rolled, it was more of a sprinkle than a geyser. <laughs> uh, no. Nope. But the tangle vines do, or the uh, the vines do. <laughs> okay. Interesting move to split up the Adramalic to him. Now uh now Arxodex can't sprint away and he sort of has he's cornered him into this area here. And of course there's the mark for death going down. He's, he's just gonna punch him. He has zero mana, so I'm guessing he's gonna punch him. That the punch of only does one mark for death and uh his ability is gonna bring that to three. Fire Shaper Ring brings it to four. A four dice attack? Dealing five damage total and one burn. That is a wonderful little action there. Um, of course, you know, the we might see a bark skin. There it is, the bark skin getting revealed. That's going to reduce that down to a total of three damage. And, of course, bringing him up to regenerate four. So all that damage is going to go away next round. It did force him to reveal the bark skin, but I wouldn't say that's really a, 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 a downside for Arxodex by any means with it's, 12 mana at his yeah. disposal. It's upkeep too, so it's kind of like bringing his channeling down, but you're absolutely right about that. It doesn't really hurt him that badly. Arxodux is in both a, a 
down, like he's in a bad position and a good position, specifically with mana, because uh, he's going to have 24 mana next turn. That's a ton uh, of mana. That could be a, a ton of mana. We could That's see a Togra even, come out of Seething Bond. <laughs> that could be a Togra. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine a Seething Bond turning into Togra is like, it's this little tiny thing, and then like in a few seconds it just grows really big and it's like, I'm a big tree now. <laughs> I was here all along. Uh -huh. And of course that, uh, wow, that bird dealing two damage. Of course, Arxodex having basically regenerate four means he's actually going to be hurt. He's going to have one damage on him. Uh, that burn is actually pretty important, though, on him, because that means that his creatures can heal by attacking him. You know, that is a good point, too. Yeah, um, although the one that wants to be healed is a little too far away for, uh, He's, uh, for use of that. Yeah, so I guess if the druid does move, that does give him a chance to heal. Although I'm not sure if he wants to... Man, I don't know if he wants to kill these pods or not. Because right now he's in a position, uh, Sharkbait, to just even the playing field. Or I guess what I'm saying is he's already even the playing field. He's already killed off the creatures. Now, if he just kills off all these other like little investments over here, that just leaves him the ability to focus down the rest of the creatures that uh, Arxodex can bring out. Yeah, 100%. Uh, with with Arxodex having 22 mana now, um, if I were Sharkbait, I would consider what, what Arxodex could do to, to utilize that mana. And the obvious choice is a creature here. And so I would actually prepare mana. around that. And uh, Sharkbait at 11 mana, this could be a lot of stuff here. And it looks like a card is going to be attached to the ceiling, bud. Togara! Or it could be a Krathor. Could be. And of course, we could see, uh, we could see a, a Krathor and some sort of Rouse the Beast, maybe? Maybe something like that? Yeah, I, I think Krathor would be a much better choice here than uh, Togara. Like, it'll probably get focused down by these Hellions. So if Sharkbait prepares like a flame blast, he could actually kill that that Krailthor if it chooses to come out of course um, in one round of actions. And uh, Sharkbait's of course proven that those big creatures he can take care of them pretty quickly. You know, it's interesting to point out that while you're planning, you immediately attach whatever card to your spawn points. And so the player knows, like right now, Sharkbait knows that something's going to come out of the mm -hmm. seedling pot. And that's kind of a tell that he could use to his advantage. Yeah, there is kind of a, a, a thing towards waiting to plan to the end, and then waiting for your opponent to be done with the planning phase, and then quickly bringing out a card and putting out something and be done with the planning phase, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of a jerk move. I think in that regard, I would say whoever has initiative has to ultimately decide first. Yeah, yeah. if it came down to like a judge, someone has to decide, you know, kind of thing. But no, there should be a penalty for a delay game. <laughs> yeah, hopefully nobody's listening to this match right now and goes, Haha, I'm going to do that every game now. God, what a dick that would be. <laughs> like, seriously, I'd just be one of those like, all right, you can do that, but next tournament, you're banned. <laughs> I hope you get champion, because this is the last <laughs> Um Man, that Sunfire Amulet is doing work for Arxodux. You know, he's already gained three life off of that for six mana, and total life, I think, is worth more than the one mana to one damage ratio. Oh, I completely agree. What's cool about Sunfire Amulet is it pretty much, unlike a mana crystal where you have to worry about it making up its cost, the Sunfire Amulet uh, technically, in a weird way, immediately starts making up for its cost because you're actually transforming your mana into life. Yeah. And that's very helpful uh, for certain builds. And you know that they're if they want to get rid of it, they're going to have to spend what you spent on it. So that's a pretty cool little thing. All right, looks like we're moving on to deployment phase. We're going to see a vine marker come out, start to hinder this hellion here. And we're going to see something attached to the tree and the seedling pod. Oh, turning into a thorn lasher. No Togarot today. I'm going to get a tickle monster instead, and something's going to come out of this uh, vine tree here. Let's see what comes out of this vine tree. Another thorn lasher. Oh, uh, the chain gang. The chain gang of tickle monsters. As I like so, to call see. it, the uh, Ford assembly line. <laughs> da, 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 da. Move on. So uh, the question is, does Arxodex have a wall and a force push? 
Or is he just planning on having a wall? Oh man, but none of them can act this turn. So basically, these Hellions have a chance to just break up this whole wall. But of course, this other Sleeping Bud has a chance to... Uh, I'm sorry, not wall. Thorn Lasher. Of course, this other Sleeping Bud can mature next round, too. This is a really interesting move. And two creatures just during deployment is actually a big like swing for, for who has the ultimate power. Yeah, 100%. And Arc Sedex on top of that still has 14 mana, and now he has 8 mana. And there goes the uh, Mark for Death, getting dispelled. That's and a good choice. That's going to save him from two dice of damage from every attack. And a, a higher chance to burn. So if, if uh, Sharkbait planned on just burning everything, um, like this round, if he has like two Flame Blasts, that really hurts him, him a lot. It's four damage off the field just from those spells alone. And not to mention Flaming Hillion, not to mention, you know, all that stuff. Arxaduck has, has put uh, Sharkbait into an interesting position here, because he had pretty much has to decide, like, right now, if he's going to uh, go after those Thorn Lashers before they get to act, or if he's going to focus on the mage. And he is going to enchant that druid. Is that another mark for death? It's a poison blood! <laughs> and he's going to go for the druid! Whoa! So he he's has decided to, and decided. He is ignoring, and this gives uh, Arxaduck a chance for the train now. Rolling five dice because he gets uh, plus one to his uh, attack, and he's going to get a burn off. Uh, barely getting that burn off, and dealing, of course, uh, four damage. Man, yeah, that six... plus one really helped him here. It did. Wonderful play there. And, of course, that poison blood prevents him from healing that two. He can still transfer the two to the tree and regenerate, though. It was a very interesting mechanic that they decided that way, and I'm actually really glad that they did, because other, like, regenerate, if it weren't for that, I feel like Poison Bloods and, and uh, um, Deathlocks would be even more potent, because really preventing a Druid from regenerating is one of the ways it's you win. It's a big hindrance. Yeah, it really does hurt him. Of course, now he's looking at this Barkskin going, well, I'm paying upkeep now for two armor, so it's like a weird... Uh, Volteric shield thing idea now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. A less efficient... Well, actually, if you're get, getting attacked multiple times, it's better than Volteric shield. Yeah, yeah that's true. Alright, and it looks like it's going to be Arxidex's turn. He has one action. Um, that's off of his druid. Let's see what it, Is he going to move, or is he going to stay put? And if we see well, a wall if he does come move, in, If he does move, he's putting himself in range of the flame hellion. Absolutely. Um, and of course Frederick saying in the chat the poison blood does also stop the sunfire amulet from gaining life which is a big deal as well well said didn't even think about that Alright, so the question is right now, what is Arxidex going to do? Because he does only have one action. And he's saying he's thinking. No problem. This is it's a, a tough decision a to make. I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with Sharkbait to go after the mage. Um, That's because... kind of what I meant by uh, pressing advantage. He had board advantage, and now he's if, if he's not careful, he's going to give it up. Yeah, and you know, like, both of these Hellions would have been able to kill one of these Thorn Lashers this round. And um, granted, uh, we're only one hour here. We're nowhere near having a term minus status. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> but of course, next round, Arxodux could get two more creatures out while the Hellions only took care of one. So that's kind of an interesting way to see that. And of course, Arxodux is going to take care of this, uh, this armor here. Hmm... Interesting choice, because I figured that he would do a Bloodspine Wall in between the Thorn Lashers and then just pull him both through the uh, through the walls, but instead, he's basically saying, alright, I'm going to get rid of your Mage's Armor, and because he's planning on doing that, he's telling Sharkbait right now that that is thorns. his target of choice. Yeah, I might Wall of Thorns. I have damage to burn. And of course, the... Um Sharkbait's Flaming Hellion going in, dealing 5 damage and 2 burn. That is pretty good. 
And of course, uh, Sharkbait choosing his mage action to just punch the druid. Ha! Huh. That's of course going to roll three damage total, uh, giving him a four up chance to burn. Um, and he does get the burn off, and he is going to deal one additional damage. Those burns are stacking, man. That is getting really dangerous. <laughs> I'm yeah, it's not often you get to see that many burn stack, but when it does, oh dear lord. And we've already seen two geysers come out of Arxodux, so the question is, does Arxodux have another geyser to help himself? Eh, being a druid, I wouldn't be surprised, but he did use two geysers on a battleforge already, so maybe he doesn't. Four damage added to the druid, and two damage added to this thorn lasher. No, da no burns getting removed this round. Oh man, I'm sure Arxodux is feeling that. Um, and of course, Arxodex can transfer two life to the tree and recover two uh, if he wants to. It's not mandatory, so I, I won't remind him if he doesn't do it. But um, but this this tree does uh, this thorn lasher does have to regenerate those. So man, those burns are getting nice. Oh, absolutely. And this, uh, if he does get the druid into the same zone as the thorn lasher, he can transfer the, those burns over to the uh, druid. Mm -hmm. Just keep stacking them even more. Absolutely. And Arx uh, Arxix is planning right now, but he hasn't actually regenerated this tree, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wait for him to be done with upkeep phase before I remind him. Don't want to be rude, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to be rude by helping him out. Yeah, you know he's he's planning right now. He's in a he's in a mindset. <laughs> but it looks like I'm gonna have to remind him to regenerate this. You know, it might it might be that Arxodux is just considering the Thornlasher dead. And that's why he's not regenerating it. You know what I mean? Like he's, uh, I mean, that's not a good tactic. But it, in not. his mind, yeah. I mean, if it in his mind, if it's already gone, then you know, whatever. So, um, Sharkbait having zero armor right now. Um, <laughs> those burns are something. Arxodex saying pleasantly, giving the two exclamation parts with a smiley face. That's one of those things where you sit in your chair like, this sucks for me. Let's try to just be really happy about it because it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me, just burning the forest down. <clears throat> so, uh, anyway... Uh, so Sharkbait, is he going to choose to get another piece of armor on now? Because he is in a dangerous position where if there is a wall of thorns, he could get a lot of damage on him. Um, Arxodex is looking at 12 mana, so he spent all of his mana last round. And Sharkbait looking at 18, so he can lay down the nuking if he wants to. And uh, Dreyfan, welcome to the chat. Good to see you here, man. I'm sorry you missed the start. Um, it looks like someone's saying, yeah, you can actually rewind if you're watching live. So even if you're joining us like an hour late, like you are, uh, Dreyfan, you can still <laughs> rewind and watch back up to four hours. But you can't hear it live and comment, unfortunately. All right, and um, so let me ask you a question, Nathan. Uh, do you think it's better for Sharkbait to just go for the throat here? Or do you think he should try to go after the rest of this thorn lasher, try to finish him off, and that sort of thing. Uh, personally, I would have attacked the thorn lasher's last turn just to get rid of them, put him off the field, uh, and then press my advantage. Mm -hmm. But since he didn't already do that, he should probably split the difference. Um, one thorn lasher's already gone, so he should just commit to it, which uh, uh, Arxodex did uh, regenerate the thorn lasher. So what I would do is I would kill one of the thorn lashers, and then uh, just you know, continue on from there. Personally, I would probably take the Flame Hellion that's in the, the current Thorn Lasher zone and move it up and attack the Druid. That way, the Thorn Lasher isn't actually going to be able to, uh, I don't know, uh, it, the, the Thorn Lasher in a corner might actually end up being useless this round. Ah, uh, yeah, so if he doesn't get the Snatch off, he goes, well, I guess I can't do it twice to this guy. And it looks like Arxodox choosing not to actually deploy anything but that vine marker. Oh, or he is. <laughs> um, now, if he does deploy something out of a tree, that makes you really wonder if he is going to do something like a wall of thorns. Because uh, obviously it would be much less advantageous if he can't wall of thorns and force push. But we do see the blood spine wall go down. Uh, Very good call. 
Interesting that he took out the armor, even though he brings out the blood spine wall. And this is kind of a faint play, you know? He's like, aha, I'm going to get your armor. And now Sharpbait's probably going, oh man, I need to put some armor on. I and that's not going to help him at all. I think if Sharkbait has a fireball in his hand, he should probably just use it in this wall. It, I can it's, understand it's that. It's probably going to save him in the Flaming Hellion's life to do that. Yeah, Flame Hellion's still pretty susceptible, especially to this combo of the Bloodspine Wall Thorn Lasher. I think statistically, it'll barely not kill the Flame la mm. Hellion by like maybe a health. But if he gets the bleed, it could end up just killing him. Which I mean, you're you're likely to get the bleed. So, although uh, if he does get a burn, uh, if he does attack a creature with a burn, then uh, he will heal one, and that will or he will uh, heal to get rid of the um, the the bleed token. That's a good point. Alright, it's going to be Arxiduxus' turn. Will he use his quick cast? <clears throat> Barkskin readies his quick cast marker. What will Barkskin do? Barkskin no like quick cast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the druid, the druid is going to use his quick cast. Let's see what he uses it on. He's going to dispel. Uh, ooh, A lot of dispels and dissolves. Poison blood is getting dispelled. That is just saying, I'm going to take down your stuff. So that I can win in a longer game. I like that, Arxidux. I think this is turning into actually a really good game. I thought it was going to be a really fast game. It is not. <laughs> not at all. You see plenty of board control. You see plenty of control in general. Uh, a lot of dispels and dissolves to run around. And the Poison Blood is going to get dispelled. Spending, spending five. And that, of course, opens him up now to another regenerate. He chose... I don't think he chose to regenerate his... No, he didn't choose to regenerate his... Uh, Transfer the health to the tree and then regenerate that. I don't think he chose that. I don't know if he knows he can do that. Um. Did yeah? Did he heal anything at all last round? No, no, he didn't Be because oh, he no. couldn't because of poison blood. And uh, I don't think he knows he can still transfer life to the tree and then have the tree regenerate. Mm, very possible. And there's the death lock going down. I was waiting for that. <laughs> that is going to be a big deal. Absolutely. That's actually a really uh, good tactic for anybody who's preventing a life gain like that. You start off with the poison blood, and then they have to react to the poison blood, and then the very like the next turn when you know that they're going to have to react to the poison blood, you throw down that death lock because they don't mm. have the means to actually dispose of it that turn. Sharkbait reading the play, saying, I bet you're going to get rid of this. Here's my counter. And of course, death lock is one of those annoying enchantments that just don't die. <laughs> <laughs> It does take a little bit, but, and here we go. Uh, Arxidarx is going to take advantage. He's going to pull the Flame Hellion, or at least so he's hoping to. And this could let's be see the if he snatches. Tickle, tickle. He is going to get that snatch, dealing three damage to him. It is oh, going to push him through is this real. wall, and this wall should kill him. It probably will kill him. Very, very, very likely. It would be a sad roll. This, this Hellion's done enough. His life is good. He can <laughs> go back to hell or whatever. Uh, let's see, he's going to roll three dice, piercing two against a two armored creature. He needs to deal three damage to win. He deals four damage and a bleed. That is going to kill this flaming Hellion. This Hellion was a trooper, man. He's been around since the beginning. <laughs> oh, yeah, no joke. He was the one that almost died, that came back to life, <laughs> yeah. and then finally died again. You know, but that, that right there shows that sometimes you don't want to uh, take the aggression against the mage until you, uh, until you solidify your advantage. Sharkbait had a very, uh, very light advantage at the time, and because he took that uh, time to attack the mage and didn't attack mm. the Thornlasher... That did cost him one of his Flame Hellions. You know, if he would have killed this Thornlasher, he would be all over here. One of these guys would have still pulled him through, but I absolutely agree with you. Wow, dealing 8 damage on a 6 dice attack, that is going to kill this uh, this Thornlasher here. And um, well, Unless the Druid has a, uh, a, a Jet Stream or a Force Push in her hand, there's really no way to take advantage of that Blood Spine into the uh, Flame Hellion. A Jet yeah, Stream would be a pretty good response. And uh, I'm thinking that right now, um, it's going to be Sharkbait's initiative next turn. So if this Flaming Hellion doesn't get pushed through this wall, he's not going to anytime soon. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. A lot of that Sharkbait has 9 mana. If he actually ends up reserving his mana, he can throw down another creature right now. And Arxilux saying the best choice right now is to kill this Deathlock. Man, this thing is so hard to kill. 
I wish Extra Ducks all the luck in the world. Um, let's see what happens here. Rolling three dice, getting one damage. Oh, that is so brutal to watch, but... And you weren't kidding. Like They're hard to destroy. <laughs> that is so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I love Deathlock. Um, of course, you know, it's possible that Shark was just thinking. Um, now that Deathlock's out, these Hellions have done their job. They allowed me to get the buffs that I want. And um, they're allowing me to uh, get in a position, wow, dealing a burn and another burn and a damage off two dice. Um, that is a total of four burns. Like, what we're seeing right now is Sharkbait do what he normally does in his in his first few builds. Like, if you watch his Gen Con, when he, what he does at Gen Con, if you watch what he does in Thunderdome 2, he is now in the position where he is doing that. But he got there through a longer game... Uh, system, and I love that, and uh, I think that's why he sacrifices Hellion because he's just like, I don't need him anymore. I know I can win right now. Yeah, absolutely, and because the Druid feels inclined to attack that Deathlock, he's she's not going to be able to. Uh, Arxodex is not going to be able to take full advantage of that Thorn Lasher over there, and oh, so that could be a detriment of mana. Five damage on the Druid, one burn getting removed. That oh. hurts. That oh, that just, is harsh. That just hurts, man. <laughs> so Ar oh, Arxodex man. is not going to gain a life, and uh, it's not gonna, uh, he's not going to be uh, healing any damage. <laughs> Unless, of course, he remembers to do the vine tree uh, trick this turn. He can transfer two to this tree. The tree can't regenerate, but he could still transfer two to the tree and have it just take a little bit of damage. I think that would be one of the smartest moves right now, um, but I'm not sure if Arxodex... I don't know if he's choosing to or not. I don't want to ask him because... It's it would be improper for a judge to ask him. If like, are you sure you I mean, don't trust wanna... me? We're, we're we're all see. Are you sure? Are you we're, sure you don't want to do this? For move? to remember right now. <laughs> it's one of those things. Where it's like you're gonna bring that card out. Are you sure you want to bring that card? Like that would be so mean to do. But... <laughs> are you sure you want to do that? Regis Regis Philbin. <laughs> Is that your final answer? All right, Drayfen. Would, would be cool to see Wallathorns plus Jetstream and the Warlock. That, I think, is going to be what Arxodux needs to do to survive, because right now it is not looking good for Arxodux. Uh, of course, you know, I mean, he has a Bloodspine wall down. He has a Ceiling Pod that can come out. Arxodux could theoretically cast two creatures right now, um, if he wanted to. Uh, it looks like we are going to move on to deployment. Will we see he only has uh, one Thorn Lasher left in his deck at most. Mm, that's a good point. And it looks like here comes the damage. Doing the fireball, it's gonna roll a total of seven dice. And it's gonna do one burn, and it's gonna do a total of oh, 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 oh. oh my. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's gonna do oh nine nine damage, one burn. That is that hurts, dude. Sharkbait doesn't even need to use his gloves. Even though he could if he wanted to. <laughs> and every time I see him use those gloves, he always just rolls really well, so he doesn't <laughs> right? them. Oh, man. Uh, this, this is going to bring Arxodux to 25 out of 37 health currently, and that's pretty harsh with Deathlock on the field. I think Sharkbait's going to win this. So next, so basically, does Arxodux have something to get him out of there right now? Is that even going to save him? Because right now what I see is this Flaming Hellion... Walking in, dealing another four, um, and then another fireball going down. This game might be over then. Very possible. I mean, it's it's not a terrible idea for uh, Arxodex to try to just uh, hightail it out of there. It will leave Deathlock on the field, and he will not be able to regenerate regularly, and that's and, pretty harsh. And he'll have four burns on him. Oh yeah, four burns. Don't don't forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see, is he going to use the hurl boulder or the force hammer? Try to just bring this down in one hit. Man, I'm telling you, this deathlock. There's the force hammer. Deathlock is so tough to kill. It is such a good card. Force hammer is going to crash into the deathlock. The oh, dice are rolling. rolled, and we four see four blanks. Oh, no, it's going to deal damage. two damage off of a force hammer. Man, Arxodux, I am so sorry. That uh, that was so unfortunate. That is unfortunate, man. Oh, and um, was hammer. What was it even doing? Like, what did like like chip him? <laughs> it it didn't know where to hit. Should have hit that spike on the head. You know, should have hit like this 
it was it this can it looks like it's 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 flying almost you know <laughs> yeah it really does i was just thinking that <laughs> The Zephlex acting like your tree from the last dome, shark bait. You went there. You went to the last do last dome. <laughs> 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 and of course, the flaming hellion is he's he, is he yeah he's not he's not even gonna move. He's just gonna sit there and just shoot him. And of course, shooting from range always goes against you, only dealing one damage. That's what you get for not moving up and just mailing him. Yeah, now he keeps himself in range at the door and lash out. Well, I guess that bad roll kind of evened out the bad rolling that happened throughout the whole thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess there's a value to which rolls are good and which rolls are bad. <laughs> and this game might be over during upkeep. He has taken the damage, very possible, and Sharkbait does have 12 mana and a full action left. Alright, and it is Sharkbait's turn. Uh, Arxuk saying, I'm pretty doomed. Are we going to see a concede here? It's probably at least going to wait for Sharkbait's action. I'd like to see it actually in proper Sharkbait doing some damage and then the burn's going off. Oh, or Arxuk's pulling a win out of his hat. That would be awesome. Never give up, never surrender when it comes to a tournament match. And, uh, you know, this match isn't... It's It's been on for about an hour and a half, so it's not terribly, like, long right now. And it looks like this Throne Lasher is going to try to attack this Flaming Hellion, getting him out of range. That's why I think this Flaming Hellion should have just moved up one. Is going to get that Snatch, is going to do two damage, pulling him through this Bloodspine Wall. This Bloodspine Wall is probably going to get another three, having Piercing two against two armor. And it's probably going to bleed, so that's probably actually going to hurt this Hellion a lot. Absolutely. I mean, even rolling max damage, the Bloodspine Wall is not going to be able to kill the Flame Hellion unless it also bleeds. And let's see how this rolls. And... Dealing three damage and a bleed, this Hellion will die over time, especially with this Deathlock on the field. And More importantly, too, it does pull the Flame Hellion away from being able to damage uh, damage the druid. You know, when it comes to a tournament match, you should always take the optimal choice. And, and I think he really fireball. he should have moved up here and attacked him, meleeed him, but yeah, this fireball is probably he'll probably roll eleven damage. <laughs> Let's see, rolling nope, six time. damage. Is he gonna use the gloves of skill to re roll? I think it's probably uh, first, yes. Regardless either way, he's not gonna be able to get a burn off with the fireball, which I guess is what a shame. He only has four what? burn on him though. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see if he chooses to re-roll. Oh, he's not uh, going to re-roll. I guess he. I think he forgot about his gloves. I don't think that's a smart choice not to re-roll. I think he should. But you know, I think Sharp Eight might be considering that he's just won, and that can butt you in the ass sometimes. Yes, it can. <laughs> and like, like he's going to lose this Hellion before he can do anything else. And um, man, I, maybe Sharp Eight's just thinking, "I want to just explode you to win the game." Explode would be a pretty cool response. Oh, does he have the geyser? He says I need a shower. It would be really <laughs> funny if he was surging wave himself. <laughs> like killed him. Yeah, extinguish is not nearly not nearly as good as uh as a uh, geyser's ability to yeah. burn. Oh, does he have a geyser? Is he gonna geyser himself? He has the tough one. Or I'm sorry, surging wave. I think he's gonna surging wave himself. Uh, doesn't know how to target himself. He actually cannot. Not with his mage. So he is gonna extinguish himself. He's probably thinking I can trade three damage with my two armor versus four burns any day. That is going to put him in a slam position. So, or most likely it's going to put him in a slam position. So that could actually be really bad for him because that means Sharkbait gets one other attack during the quick cast phase, um, even though it is Arxodex's initiative. He could teleport, I guess. Entirely possible. I'm actually looking up the rules for Extinguish right now. Oh, you want to see if it? Uh, you just ignore all damage. 
Uh, no, I know you have to take a minimum of one. The actual question I have is, does it reduce all of it, or only the amount of burns equal to the amount of damage that's removed? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's all of them, but I could be wrong. Thank you for looking it up. Yep, it's remove all and uh, minus the number of dice equal to extinguish. So he's going to roll a minimum of one, but all burns are removed. Okay, cool. And he's not going to damage himself. And he is going to push and slam himself. He should have only rolled one die. But he's not going to hurt himself, so it doesn't really matter. Why should he have rolled one? Extinguish states that you reduce the amount of dice equal to the oh. amount of burns removed. Okay, that's actually really cool. Okay, so he is going to push and slam himself. Oh wait, no, do you even push and slam when you extinguish? Uh, you roll the dice like normal, I believe. Give me a second. You know, it's kind of funny, I've actually never seen the Surgeon Wave get used to extinguish before. I've done it to myself once, and it sucked. <laughs> it was the worst result possible. So do you get push and slam? Uh, so you subtract X from the effect die roll, where X equals the number of burns. So, you so have, he's going to get minus gonna four, four to the effect. So, hang on a second. Okay, so he rolled a four, so that's a slam only. So if, if something has the Hydro Immunity um, trait and you attack them with Extinguish, you're allowed to. It doesn't do any damage, but it still removes all the burns. Wait, say that again? So if you attack something with a Hydro Immunity trait, with a, a, with a Surging Wave, for instance, it does no damage because it's immune to the, uh, to the effect, but oh, it wow. does remove all the burns. That's actually really good to know. Huh. Okay, so basically, right now, um, the burn, so he's not going to die during upkeep, but Arxodex has a quick... Oh no, is, is it Shark's initiative? Is it really Shark's initiative? For some reason, I thought it was going to be um, uh, Arxodex's. I'm pretty sure it is Arxodex's. Oh, no, it is. Showing it's up blue. Oh, my bad. Okay, okay, so basically, Arxodex has a chance right now, and I'm sure he wanted to get pushed, and it's kind of unfortunate he didn't, but he has a chance to teleport. And uh, that could buy him... I mean, I guess he's still going to be within fireball range. So if he did get pushed, he could teleport out and get out of fireball range, and that would let him live a little longer. But at this point, I don't know if it's even worth it. Yeah, I mean, basically, his best option here is to move one space, teleport two, and then force push himself... Mm -hmm. But that is, that is a lot of commitment. I mean, I, I just don't know. I think this... Ugh. I think Sharp 8 is probably just going to win just right now during the quick gas phase. It's entirely possible, but Arxodex does have a quick cast first. Yeah, the thing is, he's probably going to have to spend that quick cast trying to survive whatever attack that Shark Bait throws at him. And that means that that's one less chance to escape. That's a good point. Hmm. I guess. I guess if Archidux did a tangle vine off of his tree, he'd have, what, six mana left? So that's enough for a teleport. Yeah, that's true. I, I still think that's going to save him, though. I mean, then again, he has six life left, no burns, <clears throat> and, um,. And a fireball won't kill him because of that two armor. It's sudden. <clears throat> so. Mm. All right, so um, this is probably a tough planning phase for Arxodux because he's trying to survive. 
Yeah, there are very few uh, immediate options that are obvious that would save him. A brace herself followed by, I don't know, tr doing another spell to destroy Deathlock. He only has 10 mana re remaining, so the chances of that are Man, uh, I don't possible. see. I don't see him destroying Deathlock. I see this Deathlock being the reason why he wins game. This game, Shark Shark Bait. Yeah, I mean, I guess if he hurl boulders, he has a chance of uh, destroying it, and then he'd have he'd have it uh, just enough mana to be able to brace himself. So he'd have to, with his quick cast, brace yourself, and then activate and get a daze, and then hope that the daze doesn't work. So then you get a hurl boulder. So then you can destroy the deck. That's kind of what I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah, I could agree with that. Oh man. Tough decisions. Tough decisions. I don't know, what do you guys think in the chat he should do? No as it takes them like <laughs> this gonna take They're probably thinking too, 15 like, seconds I don't know. to respond I have no idea what in the chat too okay all right and sharkbait knows what he's doing and of course uh Arxodex could still transfer damage from himself to that tree. Yeah. Yeah, that tree would have six more damage on it, and Arxodex would probably be looking a lot better right now if he was doing that. Yeah, agreed completely. Uh, another option for Arxodex is actually Surging Wave um, uh, the Warlock, ah. and hope to not only slam, but push as well. It's a risky play, but if you do that, you put him out of one range, the slam is it means he can't do an attack spell. Then he can follow it up by Thorn Last Rank the Warlock. But Again, then though, he, to... he can't use that attack spell until after the quick cast phase. Oh, right, because he is slammed. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Let's see. Dre. Dre fan. I'd say run and regen with Tree. Else he's pretty much out of the game if he does some decent crits. 0 out of 12 damage in the tree. That's 12 damage to be healed. Absolutely. I agree with that. Yeah, right now that tree is really just a resource of extra health that you can only do two damage to around. That's really the way I'd look at it. I don't know, Dreyfan. I don't know if he should put damage on the tree. I mean, the druid is supposed to protect the forest. Why would she want it to be hurt? <laughs> <laughs> They're bonded. They don't care about protecting the bonded one. Alright, so basically Sharkbait gets a chance to roll as high as damage possible during the quick cast. And if he if he does roll high enough, he wins. And he has the gloves of skill. So if he rolls badly, he gets another chance. I cannot wait to see if he get bad rolls. It's okay, Shark can get one bad roll. That's what he's allowed. <laughs> Uh, he's got some bad rolls, but none of them were, like, really important bad rolls, and that's where it's been, like, skewed a little bit, because the rolls that mattered were the good mm -hmm. ones. All right, it's first quick cast. Let's see what Arxodex does. Please don't do a attack spell. Do the attack spell. No. Go for it. I, Sharkbait, I prefer not to get bad rolls. For what it's worth, but then again, you have gloves of skill, so you can afford. And there's the devil's trying trying to cripple him, cripple and a burn possibly. And that piercing two is going to cut right through this bark skin. Six dice. Oh, because a Hawkeye. Seven damage, and that is the game. That is the game. Wonderful finish, shark bait. Man, that was a great little finisher. I would just like to say congratulations to both Sharpate and Arxodux. This was an awesome little uh, rematch from Thunderdome 1. You guys are 1-1 one, one now in total damage, or total wins. So I believe next Thunderdome, you guys have to fight again. Yep, the final decider. Next Thunderdome. <laughs> you know, next Thunderdome, we should just skew the, the tree and <laughs> just, just make like... sure that they fight each other. I would actually argue that we should put them in the end so they have to meet up in the final round. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, so let's talk about this match really quick. So basically, Shark, what we saw is he finished it with the method he used to try to start with. But in the meantime, what he did is he got Flaming Hellions out to try to get himself there. I think that's a really mature, nice way that we're seeing Sharky's uh, Adromalic uh, sort of develop. And I really like that. Absolutely. I mean, uh, before he would have, he, as you said, he would have used that strategy early on. Mm -hmm. And he would have had no way to deal with the Thorn Lashers in the walls. He would have just been tossed around back and forth. And, and uh, so before his strategy was destroy the tree first, go after them. But he didn't even have to worry about that because instead he played for a late game. And that Deathlock really helped him a lot after that Poison Blood. I, I, we've seen him really mature, I think, from the last Thunderdome in terms of how he's using Conjurations and how he's thinking about how he can inter, interlace those Conjurations with those enchantments. Um, yes. Arxedux is even admitting, he's like, man, your Warlock is getting a lot better. And I will say, I do think it was a mistake for Sharky to sort of sacrifice these Flaming Hellions, because I feel like he was done with that phase, and he's like, they're gone now. But I think if he would have just pressed the advantage a little bit more against the, the, the Druid, he would have had that surefire way of winning, instead of like, oh, I just have to roll really well on this attack. Arxedex given the good luck next round. And some friendly well. shaking of hands here, yeah. And uh, that will pretty much conclude the match. We have a rivalry. <laughs> And I definitely like that it's a fire mage versus a druid. That's sort of like this fun little thing. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, thank you so much. Actually, you know, before we go out, Intangible, do you have anything to say about uh, how Arctrex played, how Shark Bay played, anything like that? Um, honestly, I was a lot more impressed with this match than the last one. Both players did mature their decks in, in a lot of way. When I say mature, I do mean like play for a later game, uh, and they made it work. Um, there was a lot of economy on the field, and I was very happy to see that because both of them really did get advantage out of uh, any economy play they made. So, um, well done to both of them. Uh, that was a fantastic match, and uh, I'm I was I'm very happy I got to see this. To add on that, I really love because we talked about how Shark did a bunch of stuff. I really love how uh, Arxedux, um he started with the two mana flowers, so he didn't commit too much because he wanted to see how aggressive Shark was going to be. And I really love how he played things like seedling pods and stuff to try to bait out those attacks and then played the Sunfire Amulet later on to gain that advantage in a different way. I really love that idea. I think it was he great. Very, he had a very soft opening. Um, mm -hmm. Soft as in like he didn't really play any cards that had to commit. Like a Vine Tree is a bit of a commitment because you, you, ex you know what to expect out of it. But instead he played a lot of soft cards that didn't actually... Uh, have um, you know a, a, an obvious effect, and because of that, it was much harder to read what he was going to do. Um, Shark Bay did the same thing, but his plays were a little more obvious, and so you saw a little bit of a swing turn there by uh, by Arxedux because he had waited uh, mm -hmm. for that moment to come, and um, you know it just it, it came down to the plays. It was well done. All right, guys, let's going to conclude the first semifinals match of the Thunderdome Two. In the American bracket, um, so About that is. One to go. So we have Grit versus Master Mystery next in the semifinals, and then we have the finals match, and uh, that'll conclude that, and then we'll uh, have the grand finals. And of course, uh, looking at the German one, we had Charmina already beat Hanma um, in an amazing match that you can watch on Schwengott's YouTube channel. Um, and so it looks like we're gonna have Sharkbait events, and he's gonna be fighting someone next. Guess you'll find yeah. out at the next Thunderdome. Thanks for joining us. This is Intangible signing off. And I'm Koshade. And feel free to subscribe to our Arcane Duels YouTube channel. We love all those little subscriptions. It helps us out. And uh, thanks for everyone that joined us live. Thank you, guys. See you around.